Hello and welcome to the first in a series of recorded tutorials for Computer Aided Design or CAD. Through these tutorials we are going to cover the key elements, functions and tools you will need to learn in order to be able to create drawings, virtual models and rendered images both during your time designing and realising productions at Lipper and throughout your career. We will be focusing on AutoCAD which is made by a company called Autodesk. We'll start at the very beginning with things like how to open the application, how to set up your workspace and start with the basics of drawing lines, shapes and vectors in AutoCAD to create simple line drawings. Then we'll move on to how to set up and add dimensions to your drawings and from there we'll progress all the way through to drawing in 3D creating three-dimensional models and applying textures and materials to them to create rendered objects. We'll also cover how to create and design page layouts for printing your drawings or exporting them as PDFs and how to export your model drawings so that we can then work on them further to produce fully lit rendered virtual model boxes. Now you have full access in Lipper but if you'd like to download your own version then you can use the links below this video AutoCAD allows students to sign up and download a full working educational version of their software. All you need to do is sign up, create an account and you'll be able to have access to the software download links. There are two different web pages depending if you are a PC or a Mac user, so make sure you get the correct version. Before we launch into the application and have a look, I just want to spend a couple of moments discussing why we use computer aided design and talk about the software. AutoCAD is an industry standard software package used in our field of work for technical theatre drawings. There are other alternative CAD software packages, one of those being Vectorworks Spotlight, which tends to be used predominantly by lighting designers because it has very specific um, comprehensive tools for lighting design. However, AutoCAD is still the most used currently. In fact, there's an article on the AutoCAD website at the moment uh, about Ollie Cooper, a project draftsman for London's National Theatre, describing how he uses AutoCAD in his day-to-day -day work. I've provided a link to that article below this video. AutoCAD software has been around for quite a long time now. Its first release was back in 1982. Back then there was no such thing as Mac or Windows operating system and so it used to run in DOS on computers with monochrome screens, usually black background with white, orange, sometimes green text. The graphical interface back then was rather primitive and there was no such thing as graphics tablets or touch screens and the mouse was really in its infancy still and so the user used to have to type in coordinates using the keyboard in order to be able to create lines or vectors as we call them and simple text patterns. Here's a video of uh, version 2 actually in use in 1986 to give you an idea of what that would look like. Once the Microsoft Windows operating system had been fully developed first as Windows 3.1 and then Windows 95 AutoCAD was developed to run on this platform AutoCAD has been developed throughout the years through annual updates and in 2009 it was the first version to integrate the new ribbon menu that you might be familiar with in the Microsoft Office packages. The ribbon has been developed further than the Microsoft version actually and allows the user to fully customise the tool layout. Previous versions used a layout now called AutoCAD Classic which used the familiar file, edit and help menus that were drop downs at the top of the screen. So this all leads to me telling you that one of the most important things to know about AutoCAD is that they never take away old functionality in their upgrades. So if they bring out a new tool or enhance one of the existing methods of doing something, they will never take away the old way of being able to do that function. So that means that once you learn how to do something in AutoCAD, you will always be able to do it that way. So throughout these sessions I will probably show you a couple of ways of producing the same outcome and really it's down to you to learn which method you prefer. 
In AutoCAD, there's pretty much always a shortcut to a tool that you can actually click an icon for. Okay, so what are the advantages of producing technical drawings in CAD? Why are we asking you to learn computer-aided design rather than stick to pen and paper? Well, one of the most important advantages that it provides is the ability to change and adapt drawings very quickly. By drawing on a computer, you have all the advantages that software applications provide, such as the ability to undo and redo, the ability to select parts of your drawing and replicate them. And there's a rather good rule in AutoCAD, which is once you draw an object, you never need to draw it again. With the ability to copy and paste and duplicate, there's never a reason to draw anything twice. You can also harness the computer's processing capabilities to calculate the maths and trigonometry involved in drawing your work. AutoCAD has built-in protractors, set squares and guides in order to be able to create straight lines. So that makes it a very efficient way of drawing. You also don't need to worry about drawing to scale. You'll be pleased to know we draw everything in a one-to-one -one scale on screen. So if something is 9,000 millimeters in real life, then that's exactly what we draw it as on the screen. It's only when we come to print or create layouts for exporting to PDF that we need to consider how we want to scale our work. Absolute accuracy can be maintained and dimensioning is almost automatic. In fact, it's a two-step process. You create a dimension style um, and then you basically click on the lines and it will automatically create a dimension. So that's a really fast way of working. Both two and three dimensional drawings can be produced, allowing you to create virtual walkthroughs and images to convey your ideas and intentions. In fact, it's probably worth pointing out that you don't need to start drawing in three dimensions from the outset. You can actually create three dimensional drawings from 2D drawings. Another big advantage to drawing with pen and paper is that parts of drawings can be saved and used in other drawings. And once your drawing is saved as a file, it can be emailed and distributed quickly to clients. You can even use one master document to be shared or networked across all departments to be kept up to date so that everybody is working on the same document and know where everything is. In fact, AutoCAD can implement a fairly new system called BIM, which stands for Building Information Modelling. BIM allows all designers to create documents and link them together so that they become one set of plans. This was first developed by the construction industry but is slowly being taken up by other industries and I don't think it'll be too long before we see it starting to be used in our industry either. Here's a little cheesy video to explain things a little further. First there was pencil and paper. Then came the lines, arcs, and circles of CAD, which transformed labor-intensive drafting into efficient electronic documentation. And then CAD went 3D. And now it's all about BIM. What is BIM? BIM is an intelligent, model-based process for planning, designing, building, and managing buildings and infrastructure. BIM creates more than just digital 2D or 3D models. BIM models use objects that have intelligence, geometry, and data. If a model element is changed, BIM software coordinates the change in all views that display that element, because they are all views of the same underlying information. Architects, structural engineers, contractors can work more collaboratively, accessing and updating the design, and the information is captured in the model and remains consistent and coordinated. But what makes BIM really exciting is what you can do with all that information in the model. The power of BIM lies in the information. At any point in the life cycle of the project, the information is there, accurate to help reduce time-consuming errors and rework, accessible from virtually anywhere at any time by all the project stakeholders, and actionable to help inform your decision-making with simulation and analysis. BIM helps everyone working on a project to coordinate and communicate seamlessly. With all project team members working on the same building information model, knowledge transfer is streamlined. This leads to improved accuracy and reduced rework. 
BIM helps to convey design intent from the office to the field, reducing change orders and field coordination problems. BIM solutions from Autodesk form a comprehensive portfolio of tools that help you capture more value for every phase of your work. So hopefully you can see that this could be really useful for our industry. It could, for example, allow us to draw up the set for a theatre piece and once you've put the mask in and the lighting bars and the set pieces into the system, you could start to see where overlaps or problems could arise. Okay, so let's talk about the disadvantages of using CAD then. There are a few, and I guess the main one is that you can lose work through technical failure. If your computer crashes or the power goes off, you can lose a lot of work quite quickly. And so what you need to get into the habit of doing is saving your work periodically. AutoCAD has a really good autosave function, but on the Lipper computers especially, those temporary saved files are very hard to retrieve because they get buried in the midst of the Lipper servers. And so it's important to try and remember Control S to try and save your work as often as you can. You will find, especially if you start to enjoy CAD, as I do, that you can lose hours when you start to draw just by messing around and playing around with the minutia details of your drawing. Uh, and it's very important to just save that um, as often as you can so that if anything untoward did happen, you haven't lost a lot of work. AutoCAD, although quick, is not ideal for conceptual drawings and initial ideas. It will never replace the pen and paper, the scrapbook, the notebook. You know, it's, um, it's quick, but it's not ideal for just communicating quick ideas and solutions. And lastly, if you try and share your file with someone that doesn't have a copy of AutoCAD, they will need to download a viewer or subscribe to AutoCAD 360, which is the web-based version of AutoCAD, in order to be able to open your file. So if you want to share your document with someone and you're not sure whether they've got AutoCAD installed on their machine, it's probably best to save it or export it as a PDF first so that you can then send them a copy of that.